Our top story this hour, the Yemeni army says its forces have launched a massive drone attack against Saudi targets. Earlier, we were joined by our son, our correspondent, Abdul Latif Washadi, who gave us more details about the strike. Let's take a listen. The uh, Yemeni army uh, launched a wide uh, operation, targeted a training camp in Al Wadi'a area in the Saudi borders. Uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, soldiers and officers in that camp. Uh, 60 of them, including some officers, were killed and injured in this operation. The Yemeni army uh, uh, used 10 Qasif K2 uh, uh, drones to hit the, uh, uh, the uh, camp. And uh, uh, I believe that the Yemeni army used its uh, sophisticated uh, technology uh, that the Yemeni army could to uh, invent and uh, uh, develop uh, during the last years. Uh, uh, the Yemeni army said uh, the, uh, this uh, operation is uh, uh, was uh, uh, recorded and they will uh, publish the uh, uh, videos later and this proved that the Yemeni army uh, used its uh, drones uh, spy drones to uh, detect the uh, uh, targets and to also to record this uh, operation and inshallah we are waiting for the footage to be published Faraz Najem is the manager at the Canadian De Defenders for Human Rights and joins us now. Faraz, welcome. It's good to see you. What do you make of the increasingly um, sophisticated retaliatory attacks by Yemeni forces against uh, Saudi Arabia? I mean, we, we have to remember when Saudi Arabia started this war in Yemen, one of the reasons it cited was that the Yemeni people are not Arabs. Um, but when you look at the... Uh, you, know, you look at the patience of the Yemenis, you look at their willpower, you look at their, um, uh, their courage, uh, to use a phrase of uh, the Lebanese uh, resistance leader, uh, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, if the Yemeni people are not Arabs, then who are the Arabs? Yes, uh, best regards to Press TV staff and all viewers. I mean... Um, the Yemeni nation is a very strong nation. The origins of the Arab tribes all originate from Yemen. And Yemen is, uh, you know, this is their natural right. This is their logical right to respond back and to hit the bullies and the people that are attacking them. You know, it's not the Yemenis attacking the Saudis or any other nation or any other country. It's the Saudis that launched the war against Yemen. Okay, and they're obviously instructed by the U.S. and logistical support by the biggest colonizers in the history of our modern era is Britain, U.K., and the U.S. And they're all helping, giving the logistical support to exactly hit where and what to do. Because the Saudis have no history, uh, you know, in military invasions or any wars. You know, the Saudis really, when, when, when Saddam, uh, you know, attacked Saudi Arabia at that time before, uh, they, they, they went and they asked the Americans to safeguard them and, and to respond. They couldn't respond. They were very scared back then. They didn't have any means to do anything to defend themselves. But now they're aggressing against a neighboring country where they're supposed to help your neighbor always and s s strengthen your neighbor. You know? And they always left Yemen to be in the worst conditions. You know? Before the war started, Yemen was the, uh, you know, the poorest Arab country. So if Saudi Arabia really cared, I mean, all these years, they could have helped build Yemen, just like how they built Oman or they built Bahrain or built all these other, uh, you know, regimes and these systems there. And the Yemenis, obviously, uh, the leadership under Ansar Allah and Sayyid Abdul Malik al-Houthi are very determined. They're very strong people um, and they're very organized and they learned more from this war. You know, we're going into seven years of a war, you know, March 2015, the war started, right? And you're looking at them, they thought that all these sophisticated weapons, all these advanced weapons that are supported by all these countries, including Canada, unfortunately, our Prime Minister continues to sell weapons to the Saudi regime. Uh, look at, like, it's the biggest arms deal in the Canadian history. And then our Prime Minister here sits around and goes to all these meetings and all these events and preaching human rights, preaching he cares about equality right. and cares about this, but then he, he sells arms. And the Yemenis, obviously, like I said, they are the origins of the Arabs. I mean, this advancement is the uh, natural strengthening of a country being I mean, bombarded and blockaded. Yeah. I mean, for us, you raised two very important points there. One being that, as you noted, Yemen is the poorest nation in the region. Uh, when you look at the manpower, you can't compare the two. One has hundreds of billions of dollars worth of arms from the West. 
uh, it has the global media on their side but there's also another point um, that uh, I think is important to highlight here at the start of this uh, war on Yemen the Imam of the Grand Mosque in Saudi Arabia I think in Mecca delivered a speech and said the war on Yemen is a war on the Shia why why did he make it into a sectarian uh, conflict um, some have is it so that mercenaries from the region from Africa and where have you can come and fight on, on on behalf of the Saudis because the operation today took out a lot of mercenaries Yes, well, the Saudis really don't have brain power, unfortunately, like the Saudi regime and these uh, scholars that are obviously servants for the kingdom itself and the people that are ruling. And at the end of the day, the people that are ruling in Saudi Arabia are also the servants of the Americans and the British that installed them in power. And these people, the, the, they found that the, the best way to be able to mobilize and, uh, you know, get recruit people from around the Middle East and different places uh, because unfortunately we do have a lot of I ignorance and, and we do have a lot of poverty in different areas so they were able to ignite this uh, sectarian war against Shias and Sunnis and trying to cause you know strife and, and wars between them and let it escalate and get stronger and the thing is the Saudis also have a lot of money don't forget they're sitting on a you know on the on the oil right this oil is the the black gold as they call it and they have a lot of money and this money they use it to buy you know the um, the consciousness of a lot of scholars, unfortunately, obviously not all the scholars, there's a lot of Sunni scholars that are standing up, that are obviously now they've seen that the Saudi regime is a, a friend of the Zionists, a, a friend of the Americans, a, a friend of the Islamophobic regimes, a friend of the regimes that are coming to control uh, the region and take the right. resources and, 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 and keep people in, in the weakest uh, you know, status. Just so, touching on yeah, another this... important point that you raised, uh, uh, at the same time, we have to give credit to the Sunni scholars who came out and said this is not a war on the Shia. This is a war that serves the United States and Israel. Yes, I mean, this is, you know, we have like, like you know, we have the deviant scholars such as Sudais and Sheikh Al Sheikh, the Mufti of Saudi Arabia, that has one, one eye. I'm not really trying to make fun of his eye, but I mean, like, you know, the way that he acts and the way that he portrays himself as the main scholar that you know uh, represents Islam and he's the furthest from that he only he does not really see really what's going on in the Ummah he only sees whatever the Saudi regime wants whatever the palace is uh, you know and, and, and the services that he's getting and the Sun Sunni scholars there's a lot of them that are standing up such as the Mufti in Iraq the Sunni Mufti in Iraq is making strong stands and he's standing with the Hajj al Shabi with the popular mobilization forces and standing against this American plot and the Zionist plot same thing with the uh, Mufti of Syria same thing with a lot of scholars in Lebanon. I mean, all over the world, there's scholars. Here Egypt, in Canada, we have right. Zafar Bangash. Yeah. Zafar Bangash is a very strong scholar. He comes sometimes on press TV. He always calls for reconciliation, for unity, to stand against our common enemy, and that is the one that's trying to occupy us and trying to empower the Zionist regime, to give them legitimacy, this illegitimate regime that's killing the Palestinians, that attacked Al-Aqsa Mosque, one of the holiest places for the Muslims, all Muslims. And they attacked it while it was Ramadan in the holiest nights. You know, uh, they declared a, a ground invasion in Eid. You know, the Zionist regime is an enemy of Islam. It's an Islamophobic regime. Why these terrorist attacks are happening in the world is because of the Zionist regime. The Zionist regime is the one that, you know, uh, in media works day and night to try to portray Islamists with terrorists. Islamists with terrorists because of the conflict between the Palestinians and the Zionist occupiers. Okay. They're always working day and night with the Americans to, 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 to try to... Uh, develop a picture that the Muslims and the Muslim doctrine is a terrorist doctrine and we're the furthest from that and we've seen we've seen the work of the Canadian Muslims here how hard they work here as frontline workers and supporting and strengthening this whole economy and this whole system and you know that the, you know recently you guys heard about the terrorist attack a lot of this happens from the Zionist media brothers and sisters I mean this is something that people need to spread as awareness on social media that the media has a big role in spreading hate against Muslims and we need to stop this and the governments need to stop this as well because, you know, not, not everybody can control okay, the hate us. and know how to use it. Yes.